did you have a rock bottom moment an all is lost moment like truly what was what was the lowest point in your life and is it in that book yeah there's there's a bunch of them um the majority of them for me were centered around my mother um you you know my mom Mm -hmm. you know how close i am to her yep and um you know like how important she is to me Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and Mm -hmm. so the majority of my the majority of my uh of my lows and my rock bottoms were a result of hurting my mom. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? It's a, uh, it's a, uh, there, I, I don't know that there's a pain in this world worse than hurting the person that made you. Do you know what I'm saying? Or worse than hurting the person that gave their all to make you who you are and to, to, to keep you alive as, as a child, you know? And, uh, um, and so the majority of my, my, my regrets and my pain comes from that. But, but honestly, I guess it's connected to it, but I've talked about this a little bit, but my, my rock bottom, my true rock bottom was in, uh, 2000 in, in 2010, um, I, I started a new drug because I was offered it in, in my lowest, you know, non-thinking point of my life, uh, crack cocaine and bro, crazy. Like, think about what I'm fucking saying to you right now, bro. Yeah. Like, think about what I'm saying to you. Like, I was I was just a regular white Connecticut kid. And I and I put white on it just because, whether it's, you know, for whatever reason, but crack cocaine is generally thought to be an inner city drug, mm-hmm. right? And So you're suburbs, Mike. I was just a, acknowledging I was just a your kid. privilege. I, yeah, I was yeah, a yeah, privileged yeah, yeah. kid, bro. A middle class, commu- a middle class community. And at, and at one point, someone offered me crack cocaine. Mm-hmm. And I, I tried it. And what what ensued was a, was the worst year of my life. And ironically or or sadly, and unfortunately that time coincided with a, another massive struggle in my mother's life, which was her starting to come to terms with the fact that her father was about to die. And my mom and my grandfather were the, one of those storied mom, dad relationships. My grandfather fought in Okinawa, survived world war II survived the great depression was a warrior and and provided against all odds right, for my family for my mom and her, her brother she loved him so much and when she found out that he had parkinson's and dementia and he was going to unfortunately die in a state that we talked about what just happened to your yeah grandma it, it ruined her it it it, it, it i could tell and I, I write about that in the book it, it destroyed her inside and she and it came to a point where she had nowhere else to turn. She she didn't have enough money to put him in a home. They were going to repossess his house. It just was an unfortunate unfortunate circumstance. And she said, "I think she just like dug within her and she was like, hey, like can you can you go watch after Pop Up? Like all you have to do is these three things like every day. Just make sure he doesn't fucking leave the house, kill himself, like fall down the stairs. Like he shouldn't be doing these things. And and everything inside of me wanted to be like, yeah, mom, I could do that." Well, maybe like six months to a year into it, I had started this new drug and there was a day when my grandfather was in his recliner. He was downstairs and, uh, he was, he was just screaming like, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. Like he was, he was stuck in the chair. He couldn't, he couldn't get up and he had to go to the bathroom and he probably was like peeing and shitting himself and was just in, in the worst way that you could ever imagine. And, uh, I was in the attic, uh, smoking crack. I was paranoid and I couldn't help my grandfather. And, uh, th- like, honestly, like that, that moment will never be erased from my mind. It's like, I can do, I can do so much and like, I could like try to help other people so much, but like, there will always be those things that I can't get rid of. You know what I'm saying? Like that are just there. And so, uh, that was definitely my, that was definitely my lowest point for sure. Did did you know it was a low point then? Or did you just keep going on doing what you were doing? No, I knew. I knew. I knew I was in trouble. I I think at that point, um, it's just wild to imagine. But like, for people that get into that kind of place in their life, there comes a point where you uh, there comes a point where you uh, accept the fact that you are you're finished. You're messed up. No, no, no. You're done. It's Mm. over. It's over. There was, there was, uh, I, I was, I was going to go out as Mike Malak, the heroin addict. 
that was my that was my my life. I was twenty. I was twenty five years old, and I was I had accepted, and so had my mother. My mother had accepted that fact. We weren't we even even when she had me move into her father's house, she oh. was at peace with the fact that her son had was was going to die to this to this epidemic. 